Crossville, Tennessee. You know, coming up the interstate on 40, you know, they got that big cross up there in, in Cookville. Yeah. You know, I thought, man, I, we need one of them up here in Crossville, you know, yeah. and have a big sign there, Crossville, yeah. you know. So that'd be neat. That'd be neat. But yeah, when you see that cross coming up, there, some that, I'm just about there. <laughs> I'm heading home. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We uh, we had a good trip. A uh, rough two days, uh, two of the days coming back, pretty rough with storms and working on the interstates and all. And kind of held us up quite a bit. But uh, we had a uh, uh, the services there was good. The word was uh, uh, pretty hard there. Uh, you know, I, I, the last service I preached there was on a, a godless generation, and uh, the condition of the people. That the condition of the people is. I, listen, if you, if you, I'm not saying that God's not testing us. God does test you, but when you don't seem to get any victory over it, and you can't stand before your enemy, you know, sin is at the door. And, uh, you know, you can go through the Bible. Those of you that are reading the scripture, you're probably reading through through uh, the Old Testament. And you get this sense, you say, you, you kind of think, like, when will these people ever learn? I mean, you know, yeah. you had to go so far, and boy, God bless them, everything's great, you know. Yeah. And then an evil king arises or something like that, and then they turn back to their idols and turn back to ungodliness and... Then, uh, you know, war comes, and man, they're in captivity, and the next thing you know, well, here comes somebody with a word from the Lord, and they repent, and they back on top of the mountain, and, you know, and this goes on and on and on and on, all the way through the story of Israel, and that's what you're reading about in the Old Testament, is really the history, the, the kings, and, and, and what all happens to the people. And it's all written for our admonition or our, our warning. That's what the word yes. admonition is for our warning. Yeah. Uh, looking back at what they went through and how God blessed them when they turned themselves to the Lord. But then when they started departing from God and going after other gods and beginning to live careless, uh, sinful lives, then, you know, it turned the face of God away from them. And the Bible says they could not stand... Uh, against their enemies any longer because of their, their weakness. They became weak because of their sin. Yeah. Now, these were the same men that were powerful warriors, uh, powerful men trained to fight, trained for war, and uh, they weren't any better men when they won battles than they was when they lost battles. It says simply that God was with them. Yes. So, I mean, if we want God to be with us, we're going to have to get away from sin. That's just, that's just the, the, you know, the fact about it. So a lot of the preaching there was about that, and we need those kind of messages also, but we need to, uh, to understand that God is with us, you know, and we all make mistakes. I don't understand that. We all fail God, and we, we do things we shouldn't do, and, but yet we, we are supposed to repent of those things. Yeah. And to repent means to turn from sin. Yeah. Uh, saying I'm sorry just doesn't get it. You know, I mean, you know, say, Lord, I'm sorry I did that, you know. And then you keep doing the same thing, then uh, you're not really sorry, because if you're sorry you did it, you repent of it, we would turn from it. How many wants to please God? I, I mean, I want to please God. And uh, so some of the messages there were pretty hard, uh, but it, uh, it helped a lot of the people. I mean, it really did help them to understand. I can't continue to live this lifestyle and still have the blessings of God in my life. That's that's what the bottom line is. Yeah. I mean, I like I like preaching. It just gets down to the to the nitty gritty. Now let's get down to you know where the rubber meets the road, and, and, and you know tell me what we got to do here. So that's the kind of services it was, and uh, uh, God did bless the people. They were uh, encouraged uh, to open their eyes to see what the and, and another thing too that there is this spirit of betrayal is in the world today. You look at our, our past presidency and the past uh, political scene, you see betrayal. There. You see betrayal. If you don't see betrayal in that, you, you'll never see betrayal. So it's not only the political realm, it's in the church too. People are turning against one another. They're betraying one another. And um, the prophets and Jesus prophesied that that was going to come. 
So in all of that, you know, well, what do we do? What, what, do, what do I do? What do you supposed to do as a child of God? You're supposed to press forward. You're supposed to lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset you and run this race. In other words, get your eyes fixed on the Lord. Get your eyes off the world. Everything's going to work out. Listen, if, you, if, if you're God's child, you're seeking after the Lord, and you're, and you're doing the very best that you can to serve God, God's on your side. All things do work together for good to them that love God, who are the call according to his purposes. So it's going to work to your good. You just don't be concerned about it. You know, it's going to work out. Uh, I hear you got some good news about that truck. <laughs> See, it all worked out. You know, and all that fretting and worrying about, boy, what in the world's going on here? How's this going? What's going to happen? You know, and it worked out. It's, it worked to your good. It's going to it worked to your good, and it will work to your good. Everything in your life is not good if you go through it, but it will work to your good. Just give yourself to God. You know, we, we've forgotten the simplicity which is in Christ Jesus. You know, it used to be serving God used to be so simple. You know, you repented of your sins, you got baptized, you received God's Spirit in your life. You know, you behaved yourself. You went to church. You gave. You, you paid tithes. You paid your offerings, and you lived for God. You raised your family. Everybody was happy. And that was all complicated. You know, but it's not complicated. Amen. It's it, 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 it's a simple thing. Yes, yes. And I said a lot of times, serving God is easy as falling off a limb. Bless it you. is really that easy. Thank you, Lord. Listen, you, you know, every time I say that, I get, to, I get this kind of like feeling, you know, like, whoa, you know. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light and to cast your cares upon him. He'd carry your load for you. Now that's what Jesus said. And I think he is truth, amen? amen. He's the way, the truth. <laughs> so what he spoke is the truth. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Cast your burden upon him. And if we could just figure that part out, just say, Lord, oh Lord, I'm just going to give it all to you. I can't figure this mess out anyway. I'm just going to give it to you, and I'm not going to worry about none of this stuff. And guess what? That's faith in God. Yes, Take no thought of tomorrow what you might eat or what you might wear and all that kind of stuff, you know. That's not worrying. Don't worry about it. He's the same God yesterday. Amen. He was the same God when Trump was president as he is when Biden was president. He's the same God. He's going to be the same God of the next president. Amen. He was the same God way back whoever was president. He don't ever change. You know? I mean, people change. You know, presidencies change. Rulers change. Kings change. But he don't ever change. He's still the same. He's constantly there for us. Amen. Think about all the children of God throughout the generations. Think about the children of God when the church was born and they were hunted down, you know, and uh, crucified and, you know, and, and done all horrible things to them, stoned them, did these horrible things to the church back then. Think about that generation. You, when Nero was the president, you know, when Nero was one that's in charge, amen? You know what they did? Paul would write and say, well, pray for him, you know, pray for him. Yeah. We're going. We're in the kingdom of God. That's the world. You pray for them, and we're in the kingdom of God. Amen. Even though they were hunted down and mocked and uh, crucified, killed, they just kept serving God. You know. Yeah. You think of the generations of the dark ages when the rise of Catholicism and uh, it's reported over 68 million people were killed for Jesus uh, for their testimony of Christ back then. Under Roman Catholicism, many of sometimes they, they actually just said there's probably a whole lot more than that. But think about the church then. Wonder what would you do if you were living back in those dark ages when people you were being hunted down and you couldn't think about people in other countries right now that it's against the law for them to assemble together to have church. Yet they still do it. They'll go into people's homes and have church. I can remember Linda and I in Cuba under communist uh, communism there. When they would, you know, you go to preach at a house service, you know, they'd have a flashlight. And people would be sticking their heads through the windows and everything, trying to hear the word of the Lord, you know, because they were not, they weren't supposed to have those kind of services. They're under penalty of being in prison if they had been caught. Stuff like that. I mean, just think about it. I mean, we got it made. You know what I mean? We have got it made. We've got freedom. 
Freedom still to worship, you know. Yes, so I mean, so so they get all excited because we preach against sin, preach against uh, homosexuality, and all this kind of stuff. So what, you know? Let them pitch a fit about it. It doesn't matter. We're going to keep preaching the word. They beat they beat the, the apostles for preaching Jesus, you know, and and warns them. You never go out there and preach that name no more. What did they do? They went right back out. I got back on the street again. What did they do? Start preaching Jesus again. <laughs> It's like they just didn't give a care because they were in love with the Lord. You know, they were committed to Christ, amen. They wasn't in it for popularity. They wasn't in it for prestige. They wasn't in it for money. They wasn't in it to be blessed. You know, I'm going to join the church where I can be blessed. <laughs> well, the devil will bless you outside the church. You don't have to go to church and be blessed. The devil, he's got blessing packages out there, amen. Amen. I think it was David said, I almost stumbled when I seen the prosperity of the wicked. <laughs> Amen. Just because somebody's got money don't mean that God's with them. You know, see, so what, what am I saying? I'm just saying, listen, quit worrying about what's going on out there around you and the political and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Concentrate on Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Concentrate on the church. Concentrate on, on excelling that's right. in Christ. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about is excelling in Christ. In other words, uh, promoting in uh, promotion in Christ, going from where you're at in the Lord to where, Amen. That uh, there's no limitations. I don't believe there's any limitations in Christ. I don't believe that God chose us to limit us, Amen. As far as our faith, as far as the desires of what we want to do for God, uh, the limitations that is put upon us is ourselves. We limit ourselves. So let's take the limitations off God. And let's see what God will do to a person that is committed to him. Amen? Yeah. And I'm talking about committing everything to the Lord. Your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. Just give it to him. Amen. And he'll take care of you. Thank if you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <clears throat> Amen. I'm going to do just a, a little bit of a mix-up here. But I want to read this particular verse of scripture. And, uh, and I want to talk to you about excelling in Christ. 1 Corinthians 14, how many has got it? Say amen. amen. Verse one says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Now he's writing it to the church, right? Amen. And desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy that means to speak for the Lord. Follow after. The word follow after means to pursue. So it said pursue after charity. The word charity here is the Greek agape, which is love. Follow after love or pursue love. It's, it's almost as if you don't have love to have to pursue it. But we all have love. But he's talking about the kind of love that comes from God. Okay, agape, that's that Greek word for charity there. It's, it's a love unfeigned. That means it's a love without dissimulation or hypocrisy. In other words, saying it's the kind of love, don't be a hypocrite. I mean, how many know that you've got people who tell you, I love you, and you know they no more love you than a man in the moon? How many have ever experienced that? Somebody says, oh, I, I love you, brother. You get them, and you know that. That person will more love you than nothing. Amen. That's a, that's a hypocritical love or expression. And that's what he said. He said this kind of love that we're to follow after is not hypocritical. As a matter of fact, it's, a, it's, it's the love that God has for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It's the kind of love that I can love you and you don't have to love me back. How many knows it's easy to love somebody that loves you? I'll say it again. Yeah. It's easy to love somebody that loves you, yeah. right? But, but ain't it tough to love somebody that you know don't give a care about you? Yes, it is really hard to love somebody that don't love you back. Amen. But listen, God loved us while we were yet in our sins. God loved us, and we didn't love him back. Amen. God loved the world that did not love him. Matter of fact, he loved the world that hated him. He loved the world that turned his back on God. He loved the world that killed the prophets and the messengers of God. 
But he loved those that were sinners. Amen. That's the kind of love this is talking about. Yeah. And this is the kind of love that God has said that we as Christians should pursue it. We should follow after it. We should desire it. We should desire his kind of love. Uh, do good to them that despitefully use you, Jesus said. Love your enemies. Now I want you to be honest with me. Can you really love your enemy? You, I mean, as a human being, and you've got an enemy that's attacking you. He's beat, he's beat your wife up. He's beat your kids up. Now he's thinking to beat you up. And you're going to say, oh, I love you. No, you don't, you don't love that person. You want to kill that guy, right? <laughs> Amen. You don't, you don't really love because you don't have that ability to love that kind of person. Only God has that ability to love a person that has rejected him. His, his love is nothing compared to human love. It's nothing compared to how we love or treat one another. But God is saying, and the Word is saying, and Paul is writing to the church here, he said, I, this is the kind of love that I want you to have. This is the kind of love I want you to pursue. This is the kind of love that, you know, I want you to, to, to get a hold of. It's the kind of love that God has that you don't have to love somebody back. You can love people that don't love you back. And he said, and desire spiritual gifts. So what he's saying here, right into the church at Corinthians, listen, you don't have to stay in the place that you're at with God. Some of you come in and some of you are weak in the faith, some of you are strong in the faith, some of you are babes in Christ, some of you are a little bit more mature in Christ, but wherever you are in the Lord, you do not have to stay there. You can follow after more of God. You can have more of God. That's what this is talking about. And, and he said, I want you to desire spiritual gifts. I want you to desire the things of the Spirit. The Bible teaches us there's nine gifts of the Spirit that is given to the church, and we can have those gifts operating in our lives. And I, you know, and I look at a church, and when I say church, I'm not talking specifically about us here. I'm talking about the church as a whole. And when I look at the church, I don't see a church that is spiritual. I see a church that's basically carnal. In other words, you have to be told to lift your hand. You have to be told to stand up. You have to be told to praise the Lord. You have to be told to say amen. You have to be told to do these things. In other words, it's a carnal church. It's not a, a real spiritual church, amen? And as you read through some of these scriptures, when Paul is writing to the church, he is telling the church, hey, you don't have to be satisfied. Like uh, a lot of people want to speak in tongues, you know, and through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But he said, hey, there's more to it than speaking in tongues. There's more to it than the gifts of the Spirit. There is something that God has for us, and it is a love unfeigned. A love that you don't have to love somebody about. The kind of love that God has. And he's talking about spiritual gifts. Have y'all ever thought about desiring spiritual gifts? I mean, you know, when I first got saved, and that's the first thing I wanted. I wanted some spiritual gifts, you know. I read about it in the Bible, and I'm thinking, <clears throat> man, that's something I'd like to have. I like to have a spiritual gift. And then to read down and I find out that there's gifts of healing, there's gifts of miracles, there's gifts of speaking in tongues, there's gifts of prophecy, there's all interpretation of tongues, and <clears throat> there's all these gifts, amen, that the Bible says that we can have, and there's nowhere in the Bible that I can find where he took those gifts out. Amen, they're still there, and there's an opportunity for all of us to have these gifts operating in our lives. But when we stop and we, 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 we settle down just having church, we settle down to coming in here and singing a few songs and let me holler at you a little while, you know, and then we'll, then we'll go our separate ways and we'll go get something to eat, you know, and we'll feel pretty good. Y'all have a good service? Uh, and we'll say, yeah, we had a good service. And you can call all over town, every church in town, and you can say, did y'all have a good service? And they go, say, yeah, we had a good service. Everybody has a good service. Amen. I told a preacher one time, I said, don't you ever have a bad service? Every time I talk to you, I service. Oh, service looks good today, you know. But is that the kind of service the Bible's talking about? That's what I, I'm getting to here. Amen. What kind of service would it be a good service in Paul's time. What would be a good service then as the church started out? Would it be like it is to, today? Would it be the same kind of uh, formality that it is today? Would we, uh, you know, we have it all set to what we're going to do? What kind, what would be a good church back then? And i tell you what, when you read through this, and I'm not going to read all this because I want you all to read and study this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 when you get home. 
But when you read through this thing, you find, amen, a church that was so spiritual, so powerful, that Paul had to start setting it in order. Everybody was speaking in tongues. Everybody, I mean, the power of God was just all over the place. Everybody, it was just like confusion everywhere. And Paul had to start setting it in some kind of order because it was so spiritually out of order that he had to do something to, to control the people. He said, wait, wait a minute now. Listen, all of you can prophesy, but, but do one at a time, you know. And all of y'all can speak in tongues, but, but look, yeah, just do it in course by, what, two or three here, you know, because it was so powerful. In other words, you walked in a church in that day, the power of the Spirit of God was in the place, I mean, to such a degree, amen, you just gave yourself to God and everybody was in the Spirit, everybody was uh, speaking in tongues and prophesying, and it was just a sight to behold. Paul said, hey, we got to set this thing in order. We got we to we control this thing. Man, y'all getting out of order here. But today we're so in order, I'm telling you, we need to get out of order, and then we'll talk about putting it in order. But right now, I just like to see everybody out of order. I like to see all of you speaking in tongues. I like to see all of you shouting. I like to see all of you prophesying. Man, you talking about I'll be running around this church praising God. Amen. Amen. We'll worry about the order later on. Amen. But see, they were so given to the Spirit of God. And they were just so out of control in the anointing of God that, that, that it was just mayhem there. Uh -huh. Amen. You'll see when you read all of this. Yeah. But Paul was saying, listen, I, I, I want you to desire these spiritual gifts. I want you to pursue this charity, this love of God. And, and I want you to know that there's more to it. And he goes on and he says, you know, he said, uh, you know, I speak in tongues more than all of you. That's what Paul said. But he said, well, look, he said, you know, if we're all speaking in tongues, ain't nobody going to understand what's going on. He said, so I would rather speak to you in three words in English or my, my understanding than to speak in tongues. He was trying to get the people to see, look, if you're, if you're all speaking in tongues, somebody needs to pray that you can interpret what's being said here. That's what Paul said. And he said, listen, if you speak in tongues, pray that you may interpret. You see what I'm saying? In other words, he said, listen, you know, I, it, it, this is a good thing, everybody's speaking in tongues, but listen, God must be speaking something to us here, so let's pray, you know, the, to start praying that God will give you the, the gift of interpretation where we can understand what God's trying to tell us here. If I took a service here and I just started speaking in tongues to you and and you know, an hour later, I'm still speaking in tongues, and y'all looking at one of us, and this guy is nuts. You know what I'm saying? What is he talking about? What is he saying? Amen. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about, listen, if you're speaking in tongues, you know, you're speaking to God, and, 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 and there might be a message here that God wants us to understand and wants us to hear. So he said, I want you to pray, if you're speaking in tongues, that you might be an interpreter. I want you to pray that, you know, and, 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 and that you can prophesy. He said, but rather that you may prophesy, which is to speak for the Lord. Yeah. You know, and, and Sister Diane was given a, a, a great mini message here, speaking to the people this morning. Amen. As she was, after singing her song, she would begin to edify. She began to speak of the goodness of God and how God's for us and and you know how the devil's a bad devil. And the man, she's just really doing great. And she's looking on me, oh, brother, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, I love that. Amen. Because she's prophesying. She's obeying God. Amen. But wouldn't it be wonderful if all of you obeyed God? If all of you had a word, all of you had a message, amen, that you could stand up and throw things up. I, 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 you know, I, I've got something I've got to say. That's okay. Go ahead. You'd be free here to speak, amen, to say what the Lord has given you. Yeah, I love Brother uh, uh, Pastor Blaze's church and the way they conduct, because when they conduct the church, you know, he'll minister sometime during that church. But his church people are so in the spiritual realm that all through the week, amen, if they read a, a word or something, I mean, they don't sit there and bore everybody to death. They're up there maybe three or four minutes. But when they stand up to say something, they got a message. They got a word. Amen. I know the first time I preached there, and, that, and uh, this old lady would stand up and she'd say something. This guy would stay stand up and say something. This little boy would stand up and he'd say something, you know. And this woman would stand up and she'd say something, you know. I mean, just come, it wouldn't take two minutes. 
You know what I'm saying? When I'm sitting there, the first time I was going to preach, I said, my God, what am I going to preach? They preach about, they preach about everything I know, you know. What am I going to do? But it was wonderful. Yeah. Because I seen the unity of the flow of the Spirit there. You know, one wasn't trying to take the preeminence and, you know, show how loud this one could be or loud that. No, they really had something to say, and it was anointed, and it was sincere, and it was truth, amen. And everybody got edified by what was being said, praise God. So I see there, now there's a New Testament in action, amen. They've gotten beyond the speaking in tongues, and now they're into uh, maybe interpretation, but now they're for sure into prophecy. They're, they're speaking for the Lord. Yeah, Lord. See, a lot of people think prophecies, yea, the Lord would say unto thee, thou art my child, all kind of stuff. And the Lord could say that. I'm not saying he couldn't, you know. But mostly prophesied is to speak for the Lord. It's to speak under the anointing, under, under, the, under the spirit of what the Lord is putting in you, amen. And that you're speaking to him from your heart, amen. And you're telling the people what the Lord has put inside of you, and you're sharing it with everyone. And that's why Paul has said, hey, I would rather that you all prophesy. Even in Moses' time, I think it was Moses said, I would to God that, you, that all God's people would be prophets. Yeah. Amen. Just yeah. speak for the Lord. Amen. You would be surprised what the Lord would give you during the week. Yeah. You'd be surprised what the Lord would give you before a church, a church service if you just asked the Lord, said, Lord, give me something for the people. Lord, yeah. give me something to say that I can edify yeah. somebody, to build somebody up, or, or to help somebody. You'd be surprised what you might say may really speak to a person's heart that needed that word. And you might not even know God using you, but it could be God using you. Yes, I believe God wants to use all of us. Yes, he does. I believe he wants to use all of us, amen, in the gifts of the Spirit, amen. amen. See, I happen to believe in a body ministry, a ministry of God's people, amen, amen. that the body of Christ is laying hands on the sick and seeing the sick recover. That the body of Christ is casting out devils. That you, amen, that there's an anointing that you can have, amen, and when you're at Walmart and someone needs prayer and you can pray for them and you can lay your hands upon them. But guess the Spirit can operate in your life, not just in the church service, but wherever you go. And that's what Paul was emphasizing to the Corinthian church, amen, is that you can excel in the gifts of God. You don't have to stay in, in, in speaking in tongues and, uh, and talking baby talk. You can grow up in the Lord and you can be a real woman of God, a real man of God, amen, and you can turn cities upside down with the power of God that's inside of you. He was, he was after the church to start pressing for more of God. You think about Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote 14 epistles. He wrote most of the New Testament. Amen? 14 of those epistles that you read are letters that Paul wrote to the church. You know, Apostle Paul, he cast out devils. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He struck a man blind one time. He said, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether he in the body or out of the body, I, I, I don't know, but was caught up into the third heaven and given things that he was unlawful to speak. He was talking about himself, amen. That he was called up into the third heaven. And, and, and the Lord revealed things to him. He couldn't tell nobody. Can you imagine? How many times have I been warning me? Lord, I would like to know what you told Paul. You know, I would really like to know. But I'd probably be a blabbermouth. That's probably why the Lord won't tell me. Amen. But he said, it wasn't long. I couldn't tell nobody. It's hard for me to keep secrets, brother. I'll be honest. Don't tell me no secrets. But don't hold nothing back on me either. Amen. <laughs> But Paul was a man, you know, in the Arabian desert, he spoke to Jesus face to face, and Jesus gave him the revelation of the Son of God there in the Arabian desert. I mean, if, if, if Paul didn't know God, nobody knows God, right? But you know what? He was still not satisfied. Of all that he did, all that he knew, the power of God had operated in his life, and the, and the works that were manifested in his ministry and all. Do you know that he was still not satisfied. He would say things like, that I may know him yeah. and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. He talked about pressing for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul was still hungry for more of God. Think about that. How in the world can we be satisfied just coming to church and having church? 
How can we be satisfied without having the gift of the Spirit operate or desire in any way that the power of God operate in our lives? I'm not talking about being a pulpit preacher, and I'm not talking about getting on the street and preaching. I'm not talking about nothing. I'm just saying let God use you. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. And I'll tell you, the more God uses you, the more you yes. desire for more of God to use you, there's going to be more and more and more and more. Open doors will be opening to you, amen, the more you let God use you. God wants to use every one of us. Yes, he and he would tell that early church, oh, man, you're great. You're, you're all speaking in tongues. You're all doing this. But listen, there's got to be some order here. Let's get to the nitty-gritty. Let's get to prophecy. Let's get to what God is speaking to the people. Let's get to what God's will is for the people. Let's, let's get to the place where we're all prophets and we're prophesying. And then he begins to talk and he said, hey, the prophets can prophesy one at a time and let the other one judge. What's he going to judge? Whether that's really God speaking or not. There's always judgment there for what's right and what's wrong. Amen. I mean, Nobody's going to get up and prophesy, hey, the devil is a great devil. He is really good, you know. I mean, you know, yeah, somebody can say, hey, that's wrong, you know. That's, that's not the Lord. But Paul's writing to the early church that was filled with the Holy Ghost. They were saved. They were on their way to heaven. They were spiritual. They were fantastic. Amen. Sick was being healed. The dead were being raised in their presence. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about the beginning of the church, yet Paul is saying, we've got to get this thing straightened out. You need to be present for more. All of you need to be prophesying. All of you need this kind of love that, amen, it's an unfeigned love. and It's God's kind of love. We need to start pursuing some things. Amen? Amen. 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 And see, that's what we're lacking a lot in the modern church, is that we get satisfied with some kind of a form. We get satisfied with some kind of an order, amen. A lot of churches, you know, they'll have a little program. And you go in and it's gonna have who's gonna sing what, and who's gonna preach what, and, and what the message is gonna be. Well, there ain't no surprises. You know, it's like, it's like people don't want to be surprised. I would rather, I like surprises myself, especially if it's good, amen. But I mean, that's what's happened to the church. It's gone from a real spiritual powerhouse, amen. So now, nothing but people in trouble, sickness and sorrows and headaches and heartaches and, and, and it's like, you know, like the devil has taken us all over. Well, I'll tell you what, the devil that took me over and he ain't gonna take me over. Because I'm gonna stay on fire for the Lord and that's what you need to do, amen. Get on fire for God. The Lord wants to put something in every person here. He wants to put his spirit in you. He wants to put his will in your life. He wants to put gifts in your life. And I'm telling you, we need it. How many of us, we need the gifts of the Spirit operating in our, in our ministries, in our lives? <clears throat> Amen. I believe we're all called to minister. Amen. Maybe not do what I'm doing, but certainly minister to the people in the world and minister to one another. Paul was not satisfied where he was at. Even though he, he, had, he had experienced all these gifts, he had done all those things in his life. But yet he was still hungry for more of God. Yeah. Amen. Don't ever lose your hunger for God. Amen. Because I'm telling you, the more you hunger after him, the more you follow after him, the more that he's going to give to you. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, the more you're going to get from the Lord, the more you're going to desire from him. Because I found that he is limitless. And there's no limit to him. He's limitless. Amen. It's there. You know, in the gifts of the Spirit. What would God do for us as a body of Christ? as a body of believers. And I know our church has been hit hard. Here the past year, we've been hit hard with sickness. We've been hit hard with disruptions of sin and different things that's happened in our church, you know, that, that's been a horrible thing, you know. But listen, we're still hanging on. Praise God. We're still in the, we're still in the, in the faith and we're still trucking on. Praise God. But listen, even though we've been through some storms and trials in our lives, and there's some sicknesses, amen, that, and some of the people not here because of sicknesses, and they're hindered a lot. But let's not get our eyes and keep it in the past. Let's not look at the negative. But let's look at the positive. Let's look at the future. <clears throat> let's look at what God's going to do today, amen, and, look, and realize that the day is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. The day is the day, amen, to get uh, our, our hearts desiring, amen, for the things of the Spirit, amen. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, sometimes I think about, you know, uh, when I first started out, and I remember the Lord showed me something that, that as a young Christian, and, I, and I'll never forget this happened. I, I, was, I had 
not yet quit my job. I was uh, still, you know, just seeking the Lord. And uh, I'd, I'd give my heart to the Lord. And, and I was really, really seeking after God, desiring to know what to do. And, and uh, I was thinking about the gifts of the Spirit. And I was driving one day, and one night actually. And, uh, and by myself, I was driving in my vehicle. And I was praying. And all of a sudden, you know, something spoke to me. Uh, I, I developed this horrible headache. I mean, I, I never did get headaches much, but this, my head was hurting so bad. It was, uh, I mean, have y'all ever had a blinding headache where you, you just couldn't hold it? Yeah. It just blinded you so horrible. It was just, I had never had a headache like that, never. And I was driving, it was nine, and it, it was just a blinding headache. I just couldn't hardly see, and I was praying. I said, you know, and I was praying, Lord, I, you know, I, man, I, I need you to t touch me and help me. And all of a sudden, something spoke to me and says, lay hands on yourself. That's exactly what the words were. Lay hands on yourself. How many of y'all ever prayed for yourself? How many just lay hands on yourself and fall out and all that kind of stuff? But that's what it says, to lay hands on yourself. And I'm telling you, it, 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 this is the truth. When I, I, and I just took my hand and I put it like that. And when I did that, it immediately quit hurting. It just like that, just vanished away. It shocked. I mean, I was shocked. I'm telling you, I was shocked. I mean, I'm thinking, what happened? What happened? Not another word was spoke to me or nothing. You know? You know, I'm driving down. I said, what happened? I mean, I never experienced anything like that before in my life. I mean, I just did that, and it just like that, it was gone. That was God speaking to me. I'm driving down. Then it to me. I must have the gift of healing. <laughs> you know? so, so, man, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to try this out. Now, I'm just a young Christian, you know. So I began to try it out. And honest to goodness, it worked. It, it absolutely worked. You'd be shocked at the people. I would just lay my hands on and instantly, Instantly, like whether it was a fever or whatever the sickness was, instantly it was gone. That worked in my life for several, several of my early years. And then, you know, it still worked at times, but then it seemed like it, it began to wane. You know what I'm talking about? It just didn't seem like it was as immediate as it used to be. But I do believe this. I do believe God was showing me that the gift of the Spirit was still real. And it was not just for ministers. It wasn't just, listen, the Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall cast out devils. Amen? So, they, but these signs shall follow them that believe. That word believe means have faith in. It didn't say these signs shall follow the preacher, these signs shall follow the pastor, or these signs shall follow the evangelist. No, these signs will follow the believer. Guess what? We're the believers, amen. And that's telling me that signs will follow you if you're a believer, amen. They can follow you. Can you imagine? Like we got people that's sick, we got people that's discouraged, you know. And there, I mean, those are the difference between a miracle and, and healing. Amen. There's a difference there. A miracle is instantaneous. It happens just like that. A, a healing sometimes takes a period of time for that person to heal. But I'm telling you, children of God, what God did for me, he'll do for you. I'm telling you that we're about to enter in a time when the whole body of Christ needs to be actively operating in the gifts of the Spirit, amen, not only in the church, but in the marketplace, in the workplace, or wherever you go. Have some faith in God. Let God know that I'm desiring spiritual gifts. I need the gift of healing because there's so many people that are sick. I need the gift of miracles because there's so many people that need a miracle. I need the gift operating in my life. And begin to call Oh God! Oh, yes, amen. It is because that's what Paul said for us to do. Amen. Yes. Follow after charity, pursue it, and desire spiritual gifts. Amen. He's telling the church people, I want you to desire these spiritual gifts. Yes. Amen. Begin to desire them. Begin to ask God for them. Yes. Look, it's not for make a show. 
It's not to, uh, for somebody to look what I've done, amen. And, you know, boy, I used to really get all burned up and some preacher, you know. I want y'all to come up here and tell the folks what God did for you in my ministry and all this kind of stuff. Boy, you used to burn me up. Because I'm going to tell you what, yeah, it's nobody's ministry. It's God's ministry. It's Jesus' ministry. Amen. He said, I'll have no flesh glory in my side. Amen? So it's not to make a show. It's not to build somebody up. It's not to, you know, uh, make a big hoodoo out of something. Else. But it's to help people. Amen. It's to heal people. It's to deliver people. Amen. My God, let that person go and just like, you know, go tell them what Jesus did for you. Don't even, they don't even know what your name is. Go tell them what Jesus did for you. Go tell them what God's done for you. Amen. Then, amen, the glory, it goes to the Lord. It goes to God. But that's the purpose of church. That's the purpose of the body of Christ. It's not just to come in some kind of fashion or some kind of order or some kind of same old, same old, same old, same old every Sunday. No, we need some radical changes, amen, in the way that we're, we're doing things. We need to start anticipating, desiring the power of God in our lives and spiritual gift to operate in our lives. Amen. I think about being on a job a lot of time. I think I may have been at the store sometime with Glenda. How many people have come by and come in and been taken back and prayed for and then different things have happened. That's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. 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 When somebody needs prayer, I mean, you know, they ask you for prayer, Lord, put it on the right people. Have faith in God. Trust God. Amen. And I'll tell you what, He'll use you. Amen. Can you imagine? Listen, think about the ones that Jesus chose. I mean, he chose smelly fishermen <laughs> that didn't know ignorant and unlearned men is what he, who he chose. The smartest one of them was a tax collector, Matthew. Amen. He was the smartest one of them. And then none of them like him because he was a tax collector. Amen. But he left those tax tables. And then and, and, and the other, you know, the fishermen, they didn't know anything. You know, they weren't ignorant as far as couldn't read and write. Not that ignorant. They were ignorant to the things of God. Yeah. Amen. Joe, why didn't Jesus go to the, to the church and pick his, his disciples? Why didn't he go to the Pharisee or the Sadducee? Why didn't he go over to the temple where all the religious people reside? Why didn't he choose them? Yes. Amen. Why didn't he? Why didn't, I mean, he had all these people that they already knew the word of God. I mean, why didn't he choose them? Because he chose those that were ignorant and unlearned. Because he was going to prove something to the world. Amen. That he could take somebody, listen, he could take somebody that was sinful, ungodly, unclean, unholy, a cheat, a, 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 a sinful person. He could take a dozen of them and turn the world upside down with them. That's why he chose them. He didn't choose the religious. He didn't choose those that were sanctified. He chose those that needed God. And when he converted them, when, he, when they were converted, they were changed. My God, think about the power. They turned the known world upside down. Just took those 12, then about 120. It don't take many. But it does take people that are willing to pursue the things of God, to look for it, to desire to have something from God to operate in their lives. I'm telling you, Amen. God wants to use you. Yes. Right. He wants to use us all. Amen. 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 I think about a lot of times, I mean, sometimes I get, I, I think, well, what, is, what, what can I do? You know, what, what can I do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I feel inadequate, and I, I, because I know I don't have all it takes to do what needs to be done. But then it keeps coming to me, it's the body of Christ, it's the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. One could put a, a thousand. How many, how, many can put, how many can two put to fly? How many can three? In other words, it's the body of Christ. If I could awaken the body of Christ, amen. If I could wake up, wake up the people of God, amen, to pursue spiritual gifts, to pursue the things of God, to get on fire for God, to, to really get in the place with God that God could use them and speak to them. What could you do? You could turn the world upside down. We can have a move of God. We can have a revival. I tell you one, one person cannot start a revival in the church. It takes people in church that on fire for the Lord. Amen. But I'm telling you, amen. God wants to use you. And he wants us, each one of us, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. Listen to this. Let me read you something right here. 
This was the Apostle Paul. And all that he did, all the power that was in his life, he makes a statement. Philippians 3 and 10, I quoted it a while ago, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. You know, there was an intimacy that he desired. And like I said, starting out, you know, if Paul didn't know the Lord, who could have known the Lord? But listen, you know, I, I, I can say I, I know Brother Gary. Brother, Brother Gary has been coming here, what, we've got three years now, probably. <clears throat> but really, I just get to see Brother Gary on church, during church sometimes, every once in a while. So I can't say that I really know him. I can't. I say I know him, but I don't really know him. For me to really know him, have a, a relationship with Gary, I got to get in his heart, I got to get in his mind, I got to get in his brain, I got to get in his life. I got to get to the place where I know what makes him tick. I've got to know his heart. Then I'm getting to know him. I'm talking about really know him. And that's what Paul was talking about. That I may know him. Does not, he's not saying, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want that, but there is a greater relationship. Amen. Can any of us really say that we know the Lord? <clears throat> I think we could say, the Lord knows us. Amen. But do we really know him? Listen, Paul did all those things. But he said, that I may know him. Yet, with all the conversations he had, and Jesus said, appeared to him. Spoke to him face to face. But Paul is saying, I still need to know him. How can we be satisfied with this Lord, this Savior, unless we really know him? But to know him is to know his heart. Right? To know his mind, to know his purpose to know his will, and to know what he thinks about us. You know? Does he like me? I know he loves me because the Bible tells me that, but does he really like me? Does he like what I'm doing? See, to know him. There is no, I don't know if it was a country song or a rock and roll song, but to know, know, know him is to love, love, love him. And I do. You know? But really, to know him is to love him. Now, how can you love somebody that you don't know? How can you love someone that you really don't know what makes them tick? We've not seen him, at least I don't think you have, face to face, but I'm commanded to love God with all of my heart, soul, and strength. How can I love a God that I can't see? Amen, see? But we... Paul said, listen, there was an intimacy here that we can know him. <coughs> we can really have a relationship with the Lord beyond where we're at right now. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. All these years, over, over 45, around 45 years, I guess, I can honestly say to you today that I still don't know him the way I want to know him. Amen. Some things are still a mystery to me. It's still a mystery to me. It's still a mystery. Some things I don't understand when I read and I study and I inquire and I ask God and, you know, and, and that I still don't know. I still don't know. But I know I can know. I can know all things because of the Spirit of God that's in us. It'll teach us. It'll guide us into all truth. But I have to give myself to the Spirit. And you have to give yourself to the Spirit. When you give yourself to God, God's going to give himself. Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. It's a partnership. It's a two thing. You and God. And the more you draw toward the Lord, the more you're going to experience it. And you know, sometimes sometime it might take weeks, sometimes it might take months, and sometimes it might take years. But I tell you what, there's a step being made. When you step toward the Lord, he's making a step toward you. And he's revealing things for you. And he wants to use you, every one of you, he wants to use yes. for his glory. Amen. Yes. Therefore, 
leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. It's in Hebrews chapter 6. Writing to the church at large. He said, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. That's leaving the teachings of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, laid on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. That's all doctrines the church teaches. And this will we do if God permit. See, at the closing of the, that church age, when Hebrews is written, the writer of Hebrews just said, listen, let's go on. Isn't that amazing? Well, there, there's, in other words, he said, hey, there's more to it. There's still more to it. Because God is, is, is so awesome, limitless, there's just always more that you can know about him, more that you can experience with him. And then I, my last scripture is that one in Jude where it says that, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. Can we truly say that we've got the faith that was once delivered? Are we? You see what I'm saying? Because evil people have come in among the church and have scattered the church and and there it was again. Hey, we got to get back to the faith. We got to go on. We've got to fight for this thing. We got to struggle for this thing. But listen, it's all it's all talking about a spiritual relationship with God. Yes. And I'm I'm going to close this one, but I'm going to tell you, don't ever look back. Amen. Quit looking back, right. and let's look forward. Amen. Amen. Because that, that's that's the order of God. Don't look back. Look forward. Amen. Look forward. And let God use you. Just give yourself to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And let God give you. He, he, he's desiring as much as you desire his desires to give you spiritual gifts. Right. You'd be surprised what God can do for you. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. Dreams, revelations, visions, prophecies, interpretation. This thing is real. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. I mean, God can give you a dream and fulfill it tomorrow, just like that. Linda and I have been in places and God has shown her things and uh, we, we were going to Ohio one time and God gave her a dream the night before that service. We got up there, hadn't even seen the church or nothing. And she began to tell me, she said, if God gave me this dream, there's going to be a problem there. And she began to describe the inside of that church. We had never been there. Describe the people that was in the church, particularly this one woman. And what was happening there in that church. And I'm telling you what, they in a cow in Texas. When we got there, it was exactly that way. Everything was exactly like that dream. That's how precise God is. Do you believe that God knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Do you believe he knows tomorrow? Yes, he does. The, he, the Spirit of God, Jesus said he will show you things to come. He'll, he'll reveal it to you. He'll reveal it to you. Just right in a dream, right in a vision. I can tell you things that you probably wouldn't come back to church. You'd think I was crazy. But things that God has shown me. And God can show it to you. God is a revealer of the intents of the heart. Yes, he is. But don't get it to where that you're out there and it's over yonder. No. Get this in your spirit. That God wants to use you in the gifts of the spirit. He's saying, his, his, his word is saying to you, Desire spiritual gifts. Amen. If he didn't want you to have spiritual gifts, why would he tell you to desire them? Paul wanted the church to have those gifts mm -hmm. because God wants the church to have those gifts. Yes. Amen? I'm telling you, children of God, there's a reason for this being appropriate today. And, and I believe it's to let you know that God not only loves you and cares for you, he wants to use you. Amen. So we're living in a time when we need to be the body of Christ, the hands and the feet Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, listen, Jesus is not here except in spirit. In spirit. Now we're his body. Yes. I'm his hands. I'm in his, I'm his feet. And guess what? You're his hands and you're his feet. He got to use somebody. He doesn't use angels. He uses us. 
We're the body of Christ. He wants to use you to do the works of God. Isn't that something? Amen. That the creator of the universe would want to use us? Amen. Oh, help us, Jesus. Bow your heads a moment. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the truth. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Spirit of God, the revealing, Lord. God, that you're a revealer, Lord, and you said that the Holy Spirit, the, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, would show us things to come. Lord, it would guide us in all truth. It would even pray for us for things that we didn't even know what to pray for, Lord. Because, Lord, I know you've not left us unequipped. You have equipped us. You have equipped your people, Father. And, Lord, I pray, God, that we would fall in love with you more today than ever before. Lord, I pray today, God, that you would get a hold of everybody in our church, God. Lord, God, that you would begin to speak to them in the midnight hour, begin to use them, Lord, to begin to speak to them and talk to them about, God, about the glory of God and what you're going to do in this last day. God, get a hold of our hearts, Lord, and help us, Lord, to draw nigh to you. Because I know if we draw nigh to you, God, you'll draw nigh to us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Put something in us, God. A hunger, a thirst for more of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray for every person to the sound of my voice. God, that you would bless them and help them, Father. Oh, God, to desire the things of God instead of the things of this life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen.